What's going on? This is DJ Cut. In this video, I'm going to go over the Sony A7S Mark II and how to set it up. I've been doing weddings, video vlogs, and YouTube videos. And when you're doing weddings, you're going from indoors to outdoors. You're going from 4K. Sometimes you need to do 1080p, switch it to slow motion. So I'm going to show you how I set up the camera to switch in between these really fast. So this could be a three part video. And the first part, we're going to go over the memory. Part number two, we're going to go over the custom buttons. They have some custom buttons on top and the back. So you don't have to go into the menu. And then in video three, we're going to go over memory recall and how to set that up. So when you're going from 4K to 1080p, you just switch the dial. There's two switches on top and then inside the camera, there's four other options. So you can switch back and forth really quick when you're doing some run and gun shooting. So let's uh, restart the camera, get it back to its factory restore. And then we're going to first dive into the menu. All right. So we just restarted our camera. Um, factory restore so we're gonna pretend like uh, this is the first time setting it up so hit English enter time select what time zone you're in no don't care about any of that awesome we can go to their app store now it's all set up so let's dive into the menu let's go image so if we're taking pictures what image size first button I don't care because we're setting this up for video aspect ratio um, if you want three to two or you know if you're gonna take a picture and you want it to fit your video I would select 16 by 9 but it does drop the quality so it's a personal preference quality of pictures when I take pictures it's just for social media um, so I'll set it to extra fine uh, JPEG raw file type, compressed or uncompressed. Like I said, this camera is amazing for video. It's not that good at, um, you know, taking pictures, so I don't worry about it too much. So let's go over the next thing. So we're gonna go file. And for this first one, we're gonna set this to 4K video. Recording setting, you can set at 30p 100. You can set it at 60p, 100 megabytes per second. I shoot in 24p at a bit rate of 100 megabytes. And in this camera, I would suggest getting a card that is um, at least 128 gigabytes and at least a writing speed of over 90. Um, I don't do any dual cording. This is high frame rate setting. Um, We'll get into that to a little bit. When it records to your camera, you can record it at 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. On this one, I choose to do 30 frames per second, um, a little bit higher quality. When you do the high frame rate, it does um, do a crop factor and the recording is, is not as good. Uh, drive mode, single shot, I don't really care too much about that. Bracket setting. Don't really care too much about that. Let's go to number three. Flash, don't care about that. Flash compensation, you know, don't really care about that. Focus area, we'll get into that in a little bit when we do the custom uh, buttons, but I like single shot F, um, autofocus. Right now it's on flexible mode. These are all different um, focus areas and how we want to do that. And I'll get to, into that a little bit later on. Next, we're going to go in focus settings. Uh, that's the same thing. You can just move the different stuff at the bottom. Don't care about that. Um, ISO min and max. Um, don't care so much about that. Spot metering. Nope. Auto bat. Auto white balance, uh, it's on auto right now, but I'm going to show you how to assign that to a custom button and change that really quick. Auto uh, HDR, don't care. Style, don't care. Picture profile, we'll go into depth on the effects and the picture profiles. Let's go to the next page. 
don't care about that. Uh, lock on autofocus is really, really helpful. Um, you can select a particular object. So lock on autofocus, you can take a moving object and you can hold focus on it. So let's say a skier is coming down a mountain in video mode, you lock on autofocus and it will keep that person in focus. Uh, smile detection, um, I like to turn this on. Um, you can register a face, so let's say you're at a wedding and the bride is the main person you want to keep in focus throughout the day. If, if it recognizes her face, it will focus on her face first. Um, I like to leave, um, you know, just on. And then what this will do is whenever the camera picks up a face, pretty much a set of eyes, it will focus on those first. And then as soon as that leaves, it'll go back to whatever it was focused on. So when it sees a set of eyes, that's what it's gonna focus on. So if you're in a group of people and you got a bunch of eyes there, it doesn't know which person to focus on. So then that's when you're gonna go into a set of face if you wanna use the the face recognition you're going to select the person and you're going to do that by taking a picture of them let's go back into the menu the next page skin soft effect i don't worry about ob um, object framing don't really worry about that steady shot on yes i have this on steady shot on um, i turn it off the only time i turn it off is when it's on a tripod um, you can do different settings um, you can do auto or focal length. Um, when it's on auto, then you can't change the focal length. Color space, I, I leave alone. Uh, record Audio recording, I leave on. Audio timeout, I leave all that on. Wind reduction, don't care because we're, you know, record audio off camera. Um, this camera, we just get scratch audio, memory recall and memory we'll be going into video number three. So we're gonna go into the zebras. And what you do is, depending on what you want to show up at different settings. So when we shoot in our flat picture profile, you set the zebras to 100 plus, and then as you adjust your ISO, it will tell you what is overexposed in your image because in like S-Log3, everything looks great and it's very hard to tell what's overexposed. So that's how we do that. So now we're gonna go back into the menu for this and I'm going to leave uh, zebras off so you guys can see the screen. Manual focus assist, um, I'll just leave that alone. Or actually, I'm gonna turn that off. Um, grid lines. You can select different grid lines that you want off on. All right, so when you turn marker display on, and this only works in video mode and marker settings. Now when we go back, now we have framing lines, so we know where to frame our subject if you wanna go into widescreen. So now we're gonna switch back to manual, and you'll see now that those lines, we can use them. But we, when we go into our video settings, um, the markers are there so we know where to frame our objects. Let's go to the next menu. Audio level display, we want that on so when we're recording it will show the audio level. Review, uh, pictures I don't really care about. So we've turned peaking level to high and into red and now when we go back to our image, this will only work in um, manual mode. This will only work when we have manual focus and as stuff is out of focus, um, you see no red marks. Now when you start turning it, bringing stuff into focus, now the red dial, the red bars are gonna tell you what is in focus. Let's go back into our menu. Exposure guide, don't do anything with. Clear auto, none, zoom settings. Um, you can do optical zoom, clear zoom, or digital zoom, almost like a zoom recorder. Um, if you have a crop sensor lens, you can use that to zoom in 
and so you don't get vignetting. So when you go into Finder mo uh, Monitor, you can go in to Auto. But you see I put my hand in front of here and it went black because it thinks my eye's up there and it's very, very sensitive. But right now we're gonna leave that to Auto. We're gonna set that to a custom button um, in video number two. None of this stuff, uh, I just leave all auto set. Silent shooting um, is very nice um, when you're doing video, pulling focus, taking pictures, you can put it on a silent mode. Doesn't matter to me because my camera audio comes from uh, other sources, so I don't worry about it. When we talked about the face registration, you can register the face. Um, so it knows like, hey, the bride is number one. When we get a bunch of people together, she's the face. So that's where you do that. Let's go back in the menu. You can choose what, um, if you want to use full frame, auto, or crop sensor mode. Um, I just leave off. Because um, the lenses that I use on my camera are all full frame lenses. Video light, don't worry about that. Function menu. You can go into here and you can assign a different button. So we go in here to the function and now you can assign like the, here's manual focus. I can turn it back to continuous auto. Um, you can assign these to different buttons along with on the back of the camera, see how it says like C4, you can assign a button here to the left, right, top, down, uh, C3 you can record, and there's two more buttons up top. So it's a quick way to go into the menu and set different settings for your liking. Custom key settings, this is video number two. You can go into here and we can start assigning different buttons. And I'll show you how I set mine up. Um, you can set up the dial setting um, for uh, shutter release or your f-stop. Uh, let's see what this one is on now. So right now in front is going to change our f-stop and back here is going to change our shutter. So it's up to you which one you prefer. Let's go back into the menu. Got movie mode always. So this right here, I'm actually movie always are when it's in movie mode only. So if you're in picture mode, this doesn't do anything. I leave that alone because I actually never use this uh, record button. I set it right here and uh, do my custom settings. That's my record button. Just easier to get to. Let's go back into menu, dial. Unlock doesn't really matter. Send the smartphone. All these um, custom settings for smart devices. I actually put mine in airplane mode and that will help save on the battery life because these batteries, you know, constantly shooting only run for about 20 minutes. The battery life sucks, but get lots of batteries. I don't really care. Any of these settings I don't really touch. Applications um, I don't touch personally. The way that it views, I don't touch any of those. Don't touch any of those. Brightness, viewfinder. Um, gamma assist is very interesting. So it's off right now, but in, when you change this, it will show you when you're shooting in S-Log, you can't really change, uh, determine your colors, your brightness and everything. So you turn on gamma assist and it's like the, the S log is automatically color corrected. So it helped to help to judge in like a sunny day where you're at. Um, I don't use it particularly. I've gotten used to the different profiles and how they're supposed to look in post. Let's go back in. Um, volume settings, I set mine down to one um, and I do that a, a quick button. All those, I just kind of leave the same. PAL NTS, of course where we are, we're gonna put it in NTS. HD settings, um, I don't worry about any of that. 4K output, we're not putting output. I don't you know, hook anything up to my camera output. Copyright info, you can format. 
um, file numbers in a series. Um, usually when you get the memory card in there, you want to do continuous because if you have a folder and it has two cameras and it's not in continuous mode, um, then it can it will want to copy over the top of it. So I did that once when I first started, we'll never make that mistake again. New folder and then you can reset all these settings um, here. So that's how I set up this camera inside the menu settings. So we're gonna go into part two and I'm gonna show you how to set up the custom buttons. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys could leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions about this video. If you could give a little thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe. More videos like this to come.